Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and uh, this quarantine period right now made me so crazy about my hair that I literally took like a buzzer and just started to do this myself. And then I started to freak out, and I'm like, Richard, please help cut my hair for me. And he did a great job! I mean, look at this. You couldn't even tell that there's a huge bald spot in the back of my head. Well, that may or may not have been caused by Richard. That might just be natural. But anyway, we're not here to talk about hair. We're here to talk about flair in your Instant Pot. And if you're anything like me right now, you're probably a little bit bummed about the takeout options that are available. Um, I am obsessed with Chinese food. Maybe it's because I'm Jewish and from Long Island and it's sort of like this is in our blood. It goes with the territory that we're just obsessed with Chinese food. So it just breaks my heart that right now it's not readily available to take out from places. Which is, it's understandable. Let's hope in the future that all changes. Hopefully if you're watching this in the future, they're all thriving again and everyone is getting takeout everywhere. So that being said, I wanted to make the most delicious beef and broccoli that to me tastes very reminiscent of a really good takeout place. And guys, I'll tell you right now, I just mastered it. And we're gonna be making the most amazing beef and broccoli you've ever had in your Instant Pot. Very simply done, with not too many ingredients, all easy to find. But forget the chef aprons. Put on your favorite shirt and saunter over to the Instant Pot because we're about to make something so grand, so delicious, so easy, you're gonna be slapping yourself silly afterwards. Beef and broccoli in the Instant Pot, let's go. We're gonna start with one yellow onion and dice it up. One bunch of scallions, sliced up and two pounds of a flank steak. I prefer flank steak for this. However, you can also use like chuck stew cubes and just cut those up. Um, and when you're using the flank though, make sure you cut against the grain, just like this, into strips. You see that? And there we go, all nice and sliced into about a quarter of an inch wide by about three inches long strips. Now I'm gonna come down to my Instant Pot and I'm gonna add in five tablespoons of sesame oil. It could be any kind of sesame oil as well as one tablespoon of a Shaoqing cooking wine. This is a Chinese wine that you can use to cook. However, if you can't find this, you can just use some cooking sherry in its place. And if you don't want to add it in, don't add it in at all. That's fine too. All right, now let's give this pot some heat. Now I want to come down to the control panel and hit the saute button and adjust so I'm on the more or high setting and let that oil heat up for about three minutes. And after about three minutes of our oil and our wine heating up in the pot, we're going to want to add in our onion and scallions. And we're going to saute all that up in the pot for about three minutes. All right, and after a few moments of sauteing our onions and our scallions, we want to add in one tablespoon or three cloves of crushed or minced garlic, and then stir that around and saute for another minute. Now, guys, it is time to add in our beef. And we're going to stir our beef around in the pot and allow it to saute for about another three minutes until it begins to get slightly seared on the edges. And once we look like this, we're pretty much fine. We're all good to go into the next step. Don't worry if you see some, you know, uncooked portions still. That's not a worry at all. We just wanted a simple sear, like I said. Now to the pot, we're going to add in one cup of beef broth. This is beef and broccoli after all, so you might as well use some beef broth. A quarter cup of hoisin sauce. That's a delicious, like, Chinese plum sauce. Usually you have it on mushu pork. A quarter of a cup of low-sodium soy sauce. I strongly suggest low-sodium if possible. Just because to me it tastes basically the same as regular soy sauce, except there's less sodium. Two tablespoons of oyster sauce, also easily found in most markets next to the hoisin sauce in the little like Asian or Chinese section. And two tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm using dark, but if you only have light, you can use light, that's fine. And now let's stir everything around in the pot so everything gets nice and combined, all the sauce and the sugar and the broth and the meats. That's all we gotta do so far, guys. Let's secure our lid. Make sure that the valve is in the sealing position. Now let's come back to our control panel and hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button depending on your model. And now we wanna hit the pressure cook button, guys. And we wanna go for 10 minutes at high pressure and that's it. You would just use the plus or minus buttons or a knob if you have a model like that. If you have a knob, you'll hit the start button. If you don't, you just wait a few seconds after setting the time and it'll begin immediately. There you go, starting to warm up and build pressure. 
And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna allow a 15 minute natural release. That means we do absolutely nothing for 15 minutes. And in fact, this is gonna to start to count up to 15. Once that happens, then we can finish with a quick release. In the meantime, let's focus on our broccoli. All right guys, and now comes the part where we focus on our broccoli. And the reason why I didn't add this to the pot during the pressure cooking phase is because broccoli has a tendency to want to dissolve into basically mushy nothingness when it's pressure cooked for any longer than really one minute. So we have some options. You can either take some frozen broccoli that you can get in the market, and this is the kind you can just steam right in the microwave directly in the bag, or you can just get regular frozen broccoli florets, but by the way, you should use florets or florets, whatever you want to call it. And you can take that out, place it in a bowl, cover with a quarter of a cup of water and then some saran wrap and microwave for about nine to 10 minutes until softened. Or you can use between one to two heads of fresh broccoli from the produce section and just chop off those hard white stalks and just keep the florets, you know, the little tree-like heads. And you put that in a bowl with a quarter cup of water as well, cover with saran wrap and microwave for about three to four minutes. So those are your three broccoli options here, guys. And I'm using about 20 ounces or so, but you can really use as much or as little broccoli as you want. That's totally up to you. All right, so I'm gonna microwave these. And there we go, 15 minutes of a natural release have passed, which means we'll polish it off with a quick release. And the reason why I did a natural release is because we don't usually want a quick release meat right away because it has a tendency to dry out slightly once all the steam gets sucked out. We wanna leave any kind of red meat in there for a natural release for a little period of time prior to quick releasing as a result. This gives you the best possible product you can get in your Instant Pot and it's gonna be delicious. And the pin just dropped, so let's take our lid off. And there's our beef in the pot. All right guys, now we wanna thicken this sauce up into the most amazing, perfect consistency. Now we'll hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button again, and we're gonna hit the saute button again and bring everything to a bubble. While my sauce is bubbling, I wanna take two tablespoons of cornstarch and mix it with equal parts water, that would be two tablespoons of water, and then mix it up until it forms a slurry. That's what we call this, a slurry. You'd never just dump cornstarch into a pot like this because it'll just clump up immediately, hence we have to create a little paste first, a slurry. All right, now that we're bubbling, we're gonna take our slurry and we're gonna stir it in, and you'll see the sauce is gonna thicken up perfectly. And here is my finished and microwave broccoli that's nice and steamed that I'm gonna now add right to the mix. And I'm gonna give that a stir with everything to make sure my broccoli is nice and coated in my amazing sauce. Get everything stirred up. And guys, there you have it. The most amazing beef and broccoli done in your Instant Pot so easily with plenty of sauce to drape over some rice. And if you want a thicker sauce for whatever reason, you can add in an additional tablespoon of a cornstarch slurry. That's a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water. It's totally your decision, but I think that it's the perfect thickness as is. All right, guys, now let's put this into a bowl and serve it up. And there's some I've just placed in a bowl, and I am now going to drizzle some additional sauce over my delicious beef and broccoli. Mm, the sauce is so delicious. And there we have it, guys. Some of the most delicious, easy, and authentic tasting beef and broccoli. Ready to go. Look at this. Perfect to the forkful. Let's try it out. All right, guys, and here it is, my beef and broccoli. Now let's try it out. Piece of broccoli and a piece of beef to go with it. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, I love the way those two things go together. And then that sauce over it. Okay, first off, the beef is incredibly tender. It's so well cooked. I love flank steak for this if you want to do that. It's a, the best cut, in my opinion, for beef and broccoli. However, like I said, you can definitely use like a stew cube meat if you wish as well. Not a cube steak, that's a huge difference from like cubed stew meat. That's different, okay? That's usually made with like a chuck roast. And the broccoli, it's the perfect consistency because we microwaved it and we steamed it that way. It's not gonna be mushy at all. It's gonna still have some nice substantial crunch to it. Not crunch crunch, but a nice bite to it, if you know what I mean. You don't want a crunchy, crunchy piece of broccoli. That's like for like a crudite. This is beef and broccoli. And I look at the meat. Just look at how tender. Look at how beautiful that is. Let's try that out. Melting in my mouth. This is legitimately like something I would get at a Chinese restaurant. And it's so delicious. Absolutely awesome. Oh, and if you have some rice, have it over some rice. Or um, if you're gonna have plenty of that sauce in there, pour some of the excess sauce over the rice. See like I'm doing now, pour it over, whoop, and 
good stuff. So there you have it guys, authentic beef and broccoli, done right in your Instant Pot, and honestly, it couldn't be tastier or more easy to do. Thank you so much for watching. Check out more, all my other recipes and videos at PressureLoveCooking.com. Oh, get my new cookbook. Guys, this is one of the greatest Instant Pot cookbooks you could ever own in your library. Why? Well, apart from the recipes being amazing, all 100 of them, all 100 recipes also have step-by-step -step photos for every step and a finished product as to which every single thing should look like. You know what I mean? So you don't have to guess. Look at this. Every single one loaded with pictures, over 750 of them. Go to facebook.com slash pressure luck cooking and like that page for any time a new recipe comes out, deals and item tips, some humor, and of course a pressure luck to uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. Hit that little subscribe and bell button, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you so much again, guys. And uh, when you make this beef and broccoli, you know what, maybe don't tell anybody else that you made it. I'm not even gonna let Richard know because I'm probably gonna eat the entire thing myself, so. Stay safe, alright? But be good.